This week, the cures Roger O'Donnell joins the pharmacy in conversation. I've got, you know, I've got two sides to the coin, I guess. I, I just, um, I really enjoy, I love being a member of the cure. It's just, I'm really proud of it, and uh, it's amazing. You know, I've been fired twice, so <laughs> I'm trying to hang on to my job this time. But, uh, you know, Robert and I have a great relationship. It's, uh, you know, I, I sometimes I tell him things that he doesn't want to hear. <laughs> But I just, I love being in the cure and I love doing what I do as well. And uh, I think it makes me a better member of the band for that, for those, for those reasons. So. Every band has their favorite moment or crazy story. Is there like w one or two moments that you've had since your beginning with that band in 87? Wow, that's a tough question. So many memories. Uh, the guy that owned Fiction Records, Chris Parry, um, started an alternative, the first kind of alternative record label, uh, re not record label, radio station in London called XFM. And we took it over one night, and boy, did we take it over. How <laughs> oh, so? <laughs> well, then we we'll probably locked the doors and wouldn't let anyone in. <laughs> Actually, I don't think anybody would want it to come in because we were like dancing and going crazy. It was pretty. It was pretty insane. Uh, I think the other moment was when we played the MTV Awards in 1989 in Los Angeles, and we were the only band that said that we wanted to play live. So we sound checked in the afternoon, and uh, you know, it's an audience of like I don't know, 500 million or whatever it is. And we were sitting in the audience, and I remember watching Madonna perform, blah, blah, blah. And we're just sitting there. And then somebody put their hand on my shoulder to tell me to go, to get ready to go on stage. And it was like somebody was taking me to the gallows to be hung. I was so... Uh, my palms were... Sw <laughs> I've never been so nervous in my whole life. And then... Uh, I can't remember who introduced us, but they had no clue who we were. And so we went on and played Just Like Heaven, live. And of course, none of the monitors worked, because nobody else had played live. So that was, a, that was an interesting moment. And that was kind of like the start of our, of MTV, jumping on the kind of alternative music um, uh, bandwagon, if you can call it that. But yeah, that was a pretty insane moment. I've never felt so nervous in my life. Hi, this is Roger O'Donnell, and I play with The Cure, and I've been talking to the pharmacist on the pharmacy. You came in on Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, but you we talked before, and you mentioned you had a lot, You had a, since you played on Disintegration, you had a lot of presence on there. How much, how much freedom did you have in that process of recording and, and, and creating? Um, it's a funny process with The Cure, uh, because generally, ev like everybody um, puts forward demos, and it's surprising how close to the original demos the finished songs are. And everybody, you know, everybody plays every other instrument on their demos, so the keyboard parts for like, for example, uh, Love Song, um, you know, would already been written by Simon. And um, so I stick pretty close to them. I mean, I, I, um, it was down to me to come up with the sounds because I was like, uh, you know, I was the one that most knew about all that stuff. Um, but it all, you know, everything went past Robert and Dave, the producer. So, um, I, there were some songs where I had more, a lot more freedom than others, but um, they're, they're surpri if, you, if you listen to the demos, they are surprisingly close. So that, it's kind of, uh, we're very respectful of what somebody brings to a song, uh, brings in a song to the, to the band. You know, when we played with you all, and you, you know, I've been friends with you for a couple of years, but what struck me about when you introduced me to the rest of the band, most most notably uh, Simon and Robert, uh, is that everyone seems to be really laid back and nobody, uh, 
there wasn't like a lot of ego, like who, who are you and what what's this about? What? But these people yeah. have have kind of wrote the you know post punk book in a way. And what, why do you think that they're, that they're just so nice? Uh, you know? um, I think really for for a large part of it, we uh, well for the most part. Uh, we stay outside of the rock world. I mean, we don't really know. Uh, we don't. We certainly don't hang around with uh, <laughs> rock stars, <laughs> and we certainly would never think of ourselves in that in that sense. So we we just live very ordinary lives in in England, and we're n- we're not a part of that whole scene. I think in the early days, they probably were a little more when they were in London. But now it's just like we live our own life. I mean, The Cure has always existed outside of the rock mainstream. And it's always been, um, you know, we've, we've had our friends. Uh, we know people from other bands, but we're never really that close to them. Yeah. Uh, and we just live our own life. And we, you know, part of what we do is be in The Cure and make music. But it's not all of our lives. Yeah. So we don't let it take us over, I think. Um, you know, we're not rock and roll casualties. Yeah. Well, the, the most important thing is that you grow up uh, listening to the bands that you love. You're influenced by them. You take on board what you hear. What what you hear becomes a part of you. But then you produce something different. And I think the the most serious and uh, sad thing about what's going on now is that people don't produce anything different. They hear what they they listen to stuff from the 80s and wherever or what they think is cool and they just replicate it and there's no sense in that because it will go nowhere unless you create it and you're going forward that it's pointless okay so there's a lot of talk on the streets about me uh being in the band soon so uh can you confirm or deny <laughs> those rooms? no i'll just yes. <laughs> uh, I can confirm that greg will definitely be a member of the band. <laughs> Sorry. What uh, street are you on? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not the street that Reeves lives on. <laughs> right. I was telling someone this story about, and it's a cra- it's crazy. But I was at a like a, an overnight camp. We have those in uh, in the states where basically parents just send their kids away for the summer so they can get a little freedom. Right. And somehow, me and my friend, we must have been. 14 years old we bought tickets to the cure uh, it was the, for the, the record kiss me kiss me kiss me and uh yeah, it's great I would... great we got and we got these guys the counselors who were european were we we convinced them to drive us and it was like an hour away now these days that would be like transporting a minor you know it, it yep. would be like a crime but they, they yeah, you, those guys would be in prison they, yeah. And you'd be in, you'd be in like protected care, right? And but somehow they, which you should be, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, they took us to this show, and it was like that aha moment for me, where like I, I saw that there were other weird, young, arty people in the yeah. universe, they, and yeah. they, and they, it was the cure that sort of brought it together. So. And and a great album, just so eclectic, and just like experimental in the true sense. Of the word, I mean that word gets overused, I think, and I, but I think in those in those days, the Cure was like really finding its feet and not afraid to go in all kinds of different directions. I love that album; it's still my favorite Cure album. The, the initial idea when I was asked to join was that we weren't going to do any back catalog, we weren't going to do anything else. We were just going to go on stage, play the album, and that was it. Right. But which would have been very brave, but. Um, we ended up not being that bright. What is your favorite Cure track to play on? What is your favorite one to just listen to? And what is the your favorite one that you've actually played on? Okay, um, I love playing like Cockatoose from Kiss Me because it's quite a challenge. My favorite song that I played on, ooh, either Prayers for Rain or Same Deep Water. But I love those songs. I was in the car driving to my house yesterday. And um, my iPod, or my iPhone, was playing songs starting at A. And it got to all cuts of the ground. I thought, man, that's a good song. 